So, hello, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us in this second webinar in this series dedicated to Baker and Miller, and which aim to give you the keys to master your flower and do. I'm George Tawil. Today, I'm very happy to help you in showing what is causing sticky dough, cracked product, and other quality challenges. During your presentation, you can ask questions in the question and answer box. So I will answer your question after the presentation. And today, we may not have enough time uh, to answer all the question. So if we cannot address your specific question, no worry. We will respond to you on the email address that you provided at re registration. Also, we will send you the link with the video recording after the webinar. So if you are all ready, so let's start then. So today I would like to uh, start my presentation by showing you some uh, technological challenges that the baking industry is facing. So I would like to start with the uh, sticky dough. So I imagine many of you have uh, already encountered and experienced stickiness of the dough during the production and it can happen at different moment, at mixing, at pumping stage, during shaping and poofing. And the consequences are very serious. So very serious in terms of the cost and it is also altering the efficiency of the production. When talking about technological challenges in the baking industry, we always think about sticky dough. The reason is sticky dough is a visible problem at the early stage appearing in the production. However, what you need also to know that there are many other technological challenges. They will appear later in the production and they also have significant um, cost and impact and the baking industry should deal with them. So let me now show you some of these techno technological challenges in the baking industry. Well, if you are in the uh, cookie manufacturing, so you can experience a cookie with non-standard and uniform size. So as you can see on this picture, for example, you can get finished product with a different diameter, uh, uh, and different thickness, and this is something not acceptable for uh, the industry. If you are in the uh, bread industry, one of the uh, challenges you can face is inconsistency in volume of finished bread, in size, and also in shape. In the biscuit industry, you can observe the cracker product when the packaging is open and the, in the cracker industry, you can observe appearance of blister. Let me show you more technological challenges now related to color of finished product and uh, other issues. So uh, for example, in the bread in this industry, you can get uh, finished product, finished bread with too much color, as I am showing you on this picture. And you can also experience uh, bread with low color, which is not, and sometimes not appear, uh, appealing for a consumer. You can also uh, experience variation in the crumb structure. So you can obtain uh, too dense crumb or uh, less, uh, less uh, crumb structure. In the tortilla industry, for example, you can also face challenges like a uh, problem with the rollability, the stretchability of the dough, and um, the firmness of the finished product. All 
this baking saga I just show you have one reason in common. This reason actually it is an imbalance mustache damage. So now I would like to introduce you and define the starch damage to you. So as you may know, starch is the main component in wheat flour. So starch represents uh, between 70 to 80% of the flour. Damaged starch are actually the granule that they lost their physical in integrity during the milling process. So if we look together at this schematic, so you can see here we have, uh, um, we represent the intact starch granule. So they actually, they have their um, original uh, form and shape. And if we compare it with this one, so the damaged starch granule, you can see here that the granule has lost a part of its initial shape. So it becomes damaged starch. At this stage, I also would like to give you uh, some uh, terminology uh, about starch damage. So the common term we use, uh, starch damage, damage starch, but in the literature, you can find different way to talk about starch damage. So for example, you can uh, see some terms like mechanically damaged starch, activated starch, or mechanical starch modification. So all this terminology are talking about the same thing, starch damage. But I would like also uh, to tell you that starch damage cannot be avoided during the uh, milling process. So starch damage, the formation of damaged starch depend on two main criteria. So I'm talking about the genetic criteria and the mechanical criteria. By the genetic criteria here, I mean the uh, kernel hardness. So today we know it that milling hard wheat will produce more starch damage compared to milling of soft wheat. The second criteria I would like to develop today is the mechanical one. So by this, I mean the wheat milling process or the milling diagram itself. And it's also including the pre preparation and the conditioning of the sample. Also what you need to know that there is no direct method to correcting the damage starch. And there is also no uh, improver or, or ingredient that can reduce its amount. Damaged starch has two main features. So the damaged starch granule will absorb um, too much water compared to their native form. So the, the result of this will increase the flower water absorption capacity. So if we look on the uh, component of the flower, so we can see that the protein can absorb almost two times their weight of water, pentosan 10 times of water, native starch can absorb 0 0.4 their weight in water and damaged starch uh, three to four times. So as you can see here, damaged starch absorb 10 times more than native starch. And I would like to remind you again, starch is between 70 to 80% of the flour. So you can imagine the consequences of having or absorbing much more water on the flour. The second main feature of damaged starch is it will affect the fermentation characteristic. So this will be done by increasing the activity of the alpha amylase, which will preferentially attack 
the damaged granule compared to their native form. So we just saw that um, the baking industry, or there are many uh, technological challenges in the baking industry. I just told you that there is one common reason to all this problem, which is uh, damaged starch. So let me now explain to you why actually damaged starch will cause all this problem. So let's start to see why damaged starch will cause sticky dough. Well, according to uh, Bakerpedia, those stickiness actually is considered the least desired property given the operational and cleaning issue that the bakery has to deal. So why actually the dough is becoming sticky? The dough is becoming sticky because a part of the water from the dough will leak out and thus the consequence, the dough will become sticky. So actually this is happening because too much water was added at the beginning of the mixing and this amount of the water cannot be retained to the rest of the test. What is the reason behind this? It is very simple. Actually, the flour containing too much damaged starch, so then it becomes uh, sticky. And also there is a weak balance with the protein. So this is why today we know that there is a balance between starch damage and protein content for every finished product. So what I, I want to mean by that. So for example, if you are a cookies manufacturer, so you may, may require flour that contain relatively low amount of starch damage. So it's approximately between 14 to uh, 16 UCD. And at the same time, this flour uh, require low, relatively uh, low protein content between seven to eight percent. Compare it now to pan bread, which here the production require flour with relatively high amount of starch damage. So we are between 20 to 24 uh, UCD approximately, and also um, higher protein content between 12 to uh, 14 percent. The consequences actually of imbalance and starch damage or uh, dough thickness are very serious. So excessive sticky dough will have direct consequence on the production line and on, on the cost. So as you can see uh, from this picture, so sticky dough will lead to uh, deformation of the product. Uh, we can see here the shape are not uh, very regular. And also, we, as this dough is sticky, so we'll have contamination uh, of the machine. So some part of the dough uh, may stay uh, sticking to the machinery. So then there is probably a need to clean uh, the belt or the machine uh, used for the production. Uh, this means uh, probably to stop the production, which is already uh, losing uh, in the efficiency, and it's also a cost. And it can also in, in, in sometimes uh, lead to potential sanitary issue and also uh, increasing the waste, the level of waste in terms of dough. So you can clearly, it is the stickiness of the dough, it's something very, very serious. So I just explained to you how starch damage will cause sticky dough. We just talk about the consequences. Let's now see why starch damage actually will make cracked product uh, affect the volume and shape of the finished product. So if we start with this hypothesis, so um, if starch damage is in excess, so um, in the flour, so during the fermentation, and as I explained before, the amylase will preferentially degrade the starch, the attacked granule compared to their native form. And this means 
we will have more simple sugar available in the dough. And as we have more simple sugar available, then the activity of the yeast will increase and we uh, may have, we will have more carbon dioxide. So all of this actually will make impact the stability of the dough and the consequence are impact on the uh, uh, shape, the volume, appearance and texture uh, of the uh, finished product. Let's see now why the damaged starch can also affect the color of finished product. So again, if we start with the same uh, with the um, same hypothesis, we are we are having starch damage in excess. So this means during fermentation, we will have more simple sugar available. And then during the baking step, here it is more likely to have, to form more reddish, more dark color due to the Maya and caramelization uh, reaction as briefly explained uh, on this schematic and also uh, as we can see the consequences on these pictures. In similar way, the consequences of having an imbalance in starch damage on the product appearance are very serious. So for example, having cracked product and consistency um, in volume and shape and color will actually increase the level of waste. So you can imagine if you are having um, a broken biscuit or a burned biscuit, so the company cannot sell them. Another consequences is this issues will impact also the uh, customer experience. So the customer are actually looking to consume a product with stable property. They don't want to have fluctuation from production to another. So, <clears throat> What are actually the possibilities that the baking industry has to fix the sticky dough, uh, cracked product, uh, inconsistent product in terms of color, shape, and size? If we look here, actually the baking industry has uh, quite a few options. Uh, for example, to correct a sticky dough, uh, it's possible to do it by decreasing or lowering the hydration of the dough or adding more gluten. So in this way, the dough uh, will become uh, less sticky. Regarding the uh, appearance and the color uh, of the finished products, it's also possible uh, to make some adjustments. So by uh, finely tuning the uh, process parameter like the yeast activity, temperature, time, and many other uh, parameters. However, what you need to know here is whatever the adjustment, these changes actually will increase the production cost, which is something unlikely. So we don't want to, to, to increase the cost. And it, it will also modify the property of the dough uh, in terms of extensibility, elasticity, all this property. So just think about uh, uh, all uh, this, the effect of these changes on the process. So here why we think that the best way is to avoid actually this happening on the production line and also uh, the problem appearing on the uh, finished product. How we can avoid this? It's very simple. It is by implementing flower quality control to quantify actually the amount of damage starch of each entering flower. So today, I would like to uh, propose you the asthmatic to quantify the starch damage. The asthmatic actually provide a simple, precise, and fast result. So you will have your, uh, your answer in less than 10 minutes. And also this method is compliant with many standards. The 
principle of the enzymatic actually is based on the uh, method of Mitkalf and Jill. The enzymatic tests measure the affinity of starch to iodine. The higher the damaged starch, the more actually the iodine is bound on the starch, and then the smaller, which is measured, the residual current. So on this chart, actually, I am showing you two curves for two different flower. The red curve is having relatively higher level of damage stars because the residual current is low. Compared to the blue one, this flower contains relatively lower level of damage stars. Let me show you now how easy it is to run an enzymatic test. So what the operator actually need to do, it's very simply the first step, to prepare a solution. So this solution is composed of 1.5 gram of uh, citric acid. Uh, to this, we will add three gram of potassium iodine. We'll add after 120 milliliter of distilled water. And at the end, we'll add one drop of thiosulfate. Then the operator need only to place the reaction bowl uh, inside the enzymatic and put one flour, one gram of flour in this spoon here. The third step is actually just to press on start and the uh, experiment and the enzymatic will begin. So at this stage, the heating element shown here will bring the solution to 35. And at this temperature, the machine will start producing iodine. Step number four, here the flower after will be introduced automatically by uh, vibration. So the operator uh, doesn't need to do anything here and uh, the iodine will start to bind directly to the flower. The probe in the step number five will measure the resi resi residual current, sorry. <laughs> and uh, in the last step, the result will be uh, simply displayed on this screen. So you will have uh, the result in terms of iodine, uh, iodine absorption. Uh, we can see it here uh, in UCD and UCD scale. So those are uh, Chopin scale. And also the asthmatic give the result in customized unit if you are used to use other way to quantify the amount of damage starch. So as I mentioned, this means that there are other ways to quantify the uh, damage starch. Today I would like to uh, mention quickly uh, one of them. Um, so here you have the enzymating method. The difficulty with this test is it is require long analysis time. So if you take a look on the standard operating procedure here, you can notice that the operator need to do uh, at least 14 steps to, to get final result. And uh, if you take a look more deeply, you can see, so you, you may need to have uh, many tools, actually, uh, a water bath, probably a vortex, centrifuge, a spectrophotometer, many reagents. So this is really uh, requiring a long time to, to do the analysis and requiring a lot of resource. Also, we, uh, we take also, we see the, the steps, some of them require dilution and many other uh, preparation of the reagent. So this means you may need also uh, to have qualified staff. And the last thing, actually, it's this method is too complicated to use it at industrial level. So this is why today, actually, uh, the, such, such kind of, of methods are not adapted to do quality control in the cereal industry. So we saw then uh, many technological challenges in the baking industry. We saw also that uh, the common reason is starch damage. 
we saw uh, how such damage affect various property. I propose to you to you the uh, estimatic to quantify it because it's easy, fast, and simple. Let me now show you actually how the estimatic can be used by the bakers to control their entering flour, and also how the estimatic can be used by the miller to control their process and to set it efficiently to deliver, to produce flour that meet uh, baker expectation. So in this study, we worked with a French baker. So what they were producing is um, organic pan bread. And according to uh, this partner, actually they were uh, facing fluctuation in the quality of the dough and the quality of the finished product from uh, time to time, uh, time, from day to day. So in uh, particular, they were observing sometimes sticky dough, bread collapsing after baking, sometimes the finished product uh, display a poor volume and a very red color as you can see on this picture. So in terms of uh, quality control of the raw material, this bakery actually run NIR measurement for the entering flour. So they run protein, they run um, moisture analysis, and they run ash counter. What also they told us that they receive from their supplier result on LVOGRAPH and on FARINOGRAPH. So after a, a few discussion with this uh, partner and in order to uh, uh, understand what is causing all this uh, problem, so we decided to analyze 10 flour, to source 10 flour and analyze them for their starch damage, protein level, and uh, their baking performance. The result we uh, obtained for the protein content, actually they showed that the flour or the flour are under control. So the protein content is within bakery specification. So the uh, protein level ranged between 13 to 13.5. So um, on this aspect, everything was okay. Now regarding the uh, baking test, according to uh, the bakery observation, the bread, the finished bread obtained were ranked in two categories. They were having good bread. This is what uh, they were expecting and um, uh, bad, type of, bad type of bread. For the uh, good bread, actually five flour were giving the good product. So actually this flour were passing well uh, on the production line. Uh, they were also giving a, a finished product according to a baker specification, while the five other uh, flour actually were showing issues during the production. So uh, the bakery wa was complaining about sticky dough uh, and also having very red uh, color and uh, poor volume and inconsistent shape. So, we then analyzed this 10 flour for uh, starch damage content with the asthmatic. And actually, we were uh, easily able to separate the uh, good flour from uh, the bad flour. So as you can see on this chart, and then able to uh, give the, uh, uh, to explain the reason. So actually the uh, good flour were having a relatively low amount of starch damage between 25, uh, 21 to 25 UCD and the bad flour were showing higher uh, content of starch damage, damage more than 26 UCD. So based on this result, the bakery added them as thematic specification to their entering flour. So today the, uh, the Miller should determine starch damage for uh, the delivered flour. <clears throat> so
So, <clears throat> so as we we saw in this example, actually the uh, conclusion was that this uh, mill facility is producing a high amount of starch damage. So the second step we were interested to see how in this case the asthmatic can help the miller controlling and adjusting its milling process. So to do this, in the first stage, we analyzed the starch damage for each stream flower. And as you can see uh, on this chart, so we have for uh, breakage flower, sizing one, reduction and total flower. So the amount of uh, damaged starch increase at the milling process increase, progress, to reach at the end the value of 27 for the final flower. So 27 actually it's higher compared to our target range between 21 to 25 UCD. And the second stage uh, of this analysis, we wanted actually to determine which are the most contributing fraction to the total starch damage in the flower. So for this, we plotted the flower produced per stream and we plotted also the starch damage per stream. And as you can indicate it by this circle, we uh, found that the sizing and the reduction head stream have a strong impact on the total starch damage in the final flower. So here the recommendation was that the miller should control this fraction actually uh, in priority if they want um, uh, to adjust or to, or to keep stable the um, starch damage in the final flower. The miller actually have several ways to adjust the total starch damage in the flower. Today, I will only suggest one solution. So my recommendation is to uh, fine tune the starch damage by adjusting the gap between the cylinder. As you can see on this chart, so uh, the starch damage actually decreased as the gap between the cylinder increase. So this is one of many ways that the miller um, can use to fine tune the starch damage in the flower. So here again, the conclusion is the asthmatic could be really uh, an efficient way for the miller to control and adjust uh, their starch damage in the final flower in order to meet uh, their uh, baker specification and get them satisfied. So in conclusion of my uh, presentation today, I show you that starch damage, when it's found in excess, will cause sticky dough happening at different moments uh, at the production. So it can be at mixing, uh, pumping, shaping, proofing. I also show you that starch damage, when it is in excess, will affect the uh, quality of the finished product. So we saw many technical challenges like cracked product, uh, inconsistent volume and shape, inconsistency. Uh, in color and many other uh, problems. I also told you that the uh, starch damage content will depend on two main criteria. So the starch damage is actually influenced by the hardness of the kernel and also by the uh, milling process itself, how many steps and how uh, the, the wheat was prepared. Also, we saw together that the starch damage actually is preferentially uh, attacked by the alpha amylase, and this will have uh, a serious impact on the fermentation and also by consequences on the uh, shape, appearance uh, of the finished product. What I told you also today, that starch damage is the creature of the miller. So actually before doing the uh, milling process, there is no damaged starch. But after the milling process, we form uh, the damaged starch, okay? 
And here at this moment, uh, it is very hard and costly to correct it. So we also, I also show you that such damage uh, can be good uh, and bad. So it's depending uh, on what we are looking for. We saw together that such damage will increase the uh, flower water absorption capacity. So I imagine many bakers would like to have to add more water. So this will increase uh, the profitability. Uh, but at the same time, we saw that adding uh, more water can lead to multiple many technological issues. So uh, this is, as we mentioned, as I explained before, there is a, a balance actually depending on the finished product. So today, my recommendation for uh, the miller, they should really pay uh, highest attention to control the starch damage as they control uh, the protein content, ash content. So starch damage is really also uh, very critical. Uh, we saw together has many uh, consequences. So they need to control it if they want to optimize the quality of their flour and also to satisfy uh, their customer, their bakers. Today, also on this pre presentation, um, I proposed you uh, the SDMATIC because it is an easy method. So uh, as I explained it, it's a fully automated procedure. It's enzyme free. Uh, it requires only one gram of flour the SDMATIC method is also very fast. Uh, you can get your result in le less than 10 minutes. And also the SDMATIC is reliable. It was proven to be repeatable, reproducible, and it's also uh, standardized by different uh, organisms. So with this, I came up to the um, uh, end of my presentation. I want to thank you very much for uh, your attention. Uh, and I think I am ready to take a couple of questions. Thank you again. So I'm checking the question and answer. I think we have some questions here. Let me take a look. So the first one, how to how to reduce the starch damage degree down to um, where 10 UCD because initially uh, 22 UCD we have adjusted the C if the starch damage drop it to but it does not go any lower what can we do to get lower result what other action can be um, applied well actually regarding uh, this question as you saw um, I um, I give one of the recommendation uh, um, at the end of my presentation. So it was uh, to play with the, uh, with the gap between the cylinder. But again, uh, as I mentioned, the millers have many ways, depend also on the, the source of the wheat. So probably uh, we saw it in the explanation, a soft wheat will generate less starch damage compared uh, to hard wheat. So yeah, here you, you may need actually to, uh, to see if you are selecting using blending the uh, right um, um, the right uh, variety of wheat. Uh, and also here, um, you can uh, check your milling process, how many steps you are doing. So probably uh, select some, uh, remove some of them, the stream, determine as we, uh, you can determine as we, uh, I show you in the uh, uh, Miller presentation, the most contributing fraction uh, and uh, make fine tuning. So yeah, there are many, many, many ways uh, to do to uh, adjust to drop actually the uh, the uh, starch damage. Let me see for uh, other question. Uh, so I have here a question about uh, so after reducing the degree of starch damage to from fifteen to eight, the semolina yield. I just want to clarify the, um, the protocol uh, I developed in my presentation here. Uh, it is the UCD actually value for, uh, they were developed for uh, white wheat flour. If I understood from the question, um, you are talking about semolina, I think uh, with, with the semolina, uh, the, those scale are not suitable. It's better to work with the uh, iodine absorption.
while uh, I will take another question while being as the matter how to increase the destruction if we can no longer clamp the shaft. Uh, for this question, while buying, or while buying as thematic, how to increase the destruction of if we can no longer clamp, can you please uh, reformulate it again? I'm not able to understand the uh, the purpose here. Uh, again, another yeah. Pro here I have another question, but it's to explain probably the. This is what I was uh, giving as question. What kind of available action are there to regulate the destruction of starch in flour using the asthmatic? Uh, again, actually, I, I gave the answer in, uh, in the first question. Uh, if you are a miller, you have, um, you have a different way, actually, to, uh, to, uh, to fine tune the, uh, the starch damage. So the asthmatic here is a tool to guide you, actually. Okay, so it can be the weed source, the gap of the cylinder, selecting some uh, different stream. Another question. What do you think here about the enzymatic method? Um, well, actually, for for and uh, of regulating the degree of starch damage, probably I'm, the question is not uh, clear uh, how the enzyme method can regulate the degree of starch damage. Well, I will I will try to repeat the enzyme method is also uh, another me method to quantify the uh, starch damage. Um, so as I mentioned in my presentation, um, it is um, a good um, method. Uh, the difficulties is it is too long, required qualified uh, team, uh, and also complicated on the uh, to use on the industrial level. There's I don't know some of the question I'm not able to understand. If you can clarify again the question. Do you see a lot of damage happening in the mixing process before or during the integration of wet ingredient in the bakery, or is this very small in comparison to what happened in the milling process? Well, as, as I mentioned, uh, I don't know, uh, the um, st damage starch actually is formed during the uh, milling process. So, uh, so the intensity, uh, as explained, will depend um, on the um, on the uh, milling process, how it is adjusted. So it depends on wheat source, um, uh, depend on the gap between the cylinder, uh, and also the fraction selected to make the final flour. Uh, another question here, and probably I will take uh, one or two more. Uh, so from the asthmatic results, which number are important? How do we interpret the UCD? Well, all if you are working with the uh, with wheat, white wheat flour, all the results actually are important. Uh, they are all describing or giving, uh, quantifying the amount of damaged starch. So the iodine absorption, as I as I explained, it, is um, uh, the amount uh, <coughs> of iodine bound to the starch. So the higher the number of the iodine absorption, the indication is that you have a lot of starch damage. UCD actually. It's just a way, a scale uh, to transform the iodine into UCD uh, uh, and have something very simple uh, when you compare the results. So UCD, it is called a unit Chopin uh, Dubois to measure, it is a scale to measure the content of starch damage. You may see also customized uh, unit uh, on, the, um, on the screen. So this customized unit are uh, to predict uh, other method, if you are use it, for example, as someone mentioned it on the uh, enzyme method or any other method. Um, 
Can I use the asthmatic with uh, pure wheat starch? Uh, as I explained before, so the uh, UCD scale um, uh, um, I just described was developed initially for a white wheat flour. So in case uh, like this emolina here, pure wheat starch, I recommend that you, technically you can do it. I recommend, however, you can to, uh, ex to use the uh, iodine absorption scale. Um, so how important is it to put the moisture and protein content in the, um, in the machine when running a flower sample? Well, actually here, uh, if you don't put the uh, uh, protein and moisture, uh, so you will have, uh, you will measure, you will have your result as it is. So you will take the um, uh, UCD uh, value. If you uh, do the correction, so it will be uh, taken in account the moisture and protein content of the flower. So in this way, uh, you need to use the UCDC uh, value. Uh, if at each time you, you work, you adjust the moisture and protein uh, content of the flower. Do you have any method to do when there is lump at the end of the uh, test using asthmatic? Uh, well, I, actually, I'm surprised by the question because um, when you are running asthmatic tests, so you have the agitator. And uh, from our experience, uh, it is actually enough uh, to disperse the flower to avoid having, uh, um, to avoid having uh, lumps. I don't know, probably you are using um, another material, so can you please, um, you can write us, uh, we can talk, we can see if you, your material is different and we, we, we can uh, probably make tests to make sure that uh, there is no lumps. But currently with white wheat flour, the agitator is enough uh, and actually we don't have feedback to have to form lumps. It's really uh, intense and to disperse the, uh, the uh, to avoid having lumps actually. What is the last question I have here? So what is the correlation between UCD and percentage of water absorption? Well, actually, as, uh, as I explained in the uh, presentation, um, so with the UCD, we are at a scale we, uh, to express the amount of uh, starch damage. So if we have higher starch damage, logically, actually, we are supposed to see uh, an increase of the uh, flower water absorption capacity. So yeah, the relation we can see when it, uh, the UCD increase, the water absorption should uh, increase. More question? Well, if you do not have any more question, I want to thank you again for joining us to uh, this webinar. And so, as I said, we will send you the video recording after the webinar and see you then in the uh, next episode. Thank you. Bye-bye.